Oh, uh, yeah, we had a bunch of box. We used uh, fender gear and uh, some silver tone gear, uh, Gibson guitars, box guitars. That's well, right, yeah. <laughs> we, we had something of, of an advantage in a way that we had pretty good support. I mean, like a lot of bands back then got up and everybody plugged into their amp. Right. Yeah. And we had our own separate amps and uh, a nice PA system and mm -hmm. stuff and little flashing lights. And we looked definitely a cut above yeah. right. what was running. Mm -hmm. Uniforms. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Corbett had some weird bass guitar, an AR or something like that. It's the only one I ever saw like it. It was kind of a big Fender Precision copy. I think it seems like we bought it in a pawn shop. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. Or like Maxie's down in Little Rock or someplace and gave him 50 bucks for it or something. This was a AR guitar, A-Y-A-R. I don't even remember where we got it. I've never seen another one. I've never heard of it. Did not have a Hoffman bass or anything like that. That's Mike Corbin's Super Beetle Vox amplifier. We also had Vox PA columns. Oh, okay. You know, when the Beatles used Vox, you had to get Vox. Right. Now, you know. what was your guitar at the time? Uh, I had a uh, Gibson Melody Maker. It's a red, uh, very thin guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, the only one I've ever seen since, Lisa Loeb was playing a Gibson Melody Maker at Memphis in May about eight years ago. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Do you anything else about Danny? I, mean, I don't really know what to ask him about him. I mean, he was just a great yeah. kid. You yeah. Know? I mean, we all had, he was, was he two Loved years Loved a hot rod. He was, I think, two years two of school years behind us. Yeah. Well, yeah, he was, he was a was, sophomore yeah. or senior year. Yeah. And he had a little bit of a hot rodder. Yeah. You know, yeah. his dad buy him all these uh, really cool little cars, and he was real bad about drag racing and I mean, stuff he had like a, that. A 64? 64 Impala SS convertible. Blue with, with white four, interior. 426. 427. 427. 427. Yeah. 427. I mean. Pass anything on the road but a gas station. It was unbelievable. Wow. Wow, that's great. I think that the fastest I've ever been in a car was in that yeah. car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He'd scare you in it. <clears throat> Uh, Danny was a real strong young man. He just crunched a set of drums. And our drummer was constantly buying new drums. Anything that was wild. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, in the 60s they had all these drums with different shapes. Right. They'd start, the bass drum would be this big back here and this big up here. And all That's the other drums, drums, you know. <laughs> and he bought a set of those. Wow. And, uh, egg-shaped drums, you know, uh -huh. Danny would go get them. He just loved them, <laughs> just beat the fool out of them. Uh. And didn't Danny come up with the Butterscotch Valley Freight Train, too? Probably. <laughs> I think so. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> He's always coming up with these cute little names. <laughs> so, in, in the early days, um, you guys were playing at were you guys playing at different places that you didn't play later? Like the, uh, Mike Gordon was telling me about the Cabot skating rink and the Twin City Drive-In skating rink was kind of a proving ground for bands. You remember that? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah I mean, that, that's where, I mean, and that's where we met a lot of musicians that we had never, that I'd never met before, mm -hmm. you know, because they were from Little Rock or North Little Rock, and, uh, you know, they would play there, and when we weren't playing there, and if, if we weren't working, I mean, you always went. Anyway, you know, okay. you go wherever the music is back then, and so and skating rinks were real popular. Real popular venues, venues back then, yeah, sure were. Because there was always a you know skate until nine thirty or ten, and then band from ten thirty till twelve. You know. This would be on weekends. Weekends, mm -hmm. on Fridays and Saturday yeah. nights. And one time, I mean, there's sometimes that we'd play in one in on Friday and the other on Saturday, or yeah. vice versa. You know. Right. Gus, we played a lot of places in Jacksonville, obviously, after any football games, basketball games. There were two roller rinks, uh, one in Cabot and one out the old Twin City Drive-In, if anybody remembers where that is, or used to be. I think that place is a boat factory now, but uh, <clears throat> at 10 o'clock they had quit skating and bring in a band. That's where a lot of people kind of got their start doing that. We did, certainly. Uh, <clears throat> played at the teen club a lot over at the... Uh, 
uh, out the air base, played on at the um, Thomas Rec Center, which is the Airman's Club out there, played at the NCO Club out there, played some at the uh, uh, Officer's Club. And, you know, around uh, different areas like that, yeah, just uh, uh, three or four hour gigs and made a little money. A lot of people my age at the time would uh, work at a grocery store or do this, that, and the other. And well, we made our money by playing on Friday or Saturday and sometimes Sunday nights. What about uh, Lake Nixon? You guys play out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure what, did. What, what was that like out there? Well, it was just, uh, they had a, stage at the end of this covered pavilion mm -hmm. and uh, you know you'd play out there in the middle of the afternoon and uh, there's always a lot of young you know teenagers right. there because it was just a it was a great great time oh yeah there. it was a and you know they're all a big crowd out of like they were swimming <laughs> and kwa would you know do you know live stuff from there yeah they do remotes yeah. from there so you guys are on the radio playing there? Sometimes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, remember they did them from uh, the third floor of Moses oh, yeah. at some too. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. I guess we were pretty popular, you know, in the central Arkansas area at that time. I mean, we not only played just dances in Jacksonville, but we played, you know, in Little Rock and played out the Air Force Base. And, uh, you know, I mean, we were young kids with a rock and roll band playing anywhere we could. Kids with part-time jobs were making... 20 bucks a week and we were in a rock and roll band making 20 bucks a night. We could afford nice flowers for our girlfriends well, to the dances what and I remember take them to dinner. Doing, though, we'd, we'd, we'd go to Fisher's Steakhouse Absolutely. a lot. Yeah. You know, Broadway of mm -hmm. North Little Rock down there. Cause we had enough money to do that, man. We thought we was doing great. Yeah. And, and they used to serve until like 11 o'clock at night. So, I mean, you could go down there, you know, like you could go to a movie or we could play a job and get off at 10 o'clock or something. And, go over to Cuz Fisher's Steakhouse and get a club steak that, I mean, it was this big, <laughs> filled the platter and baked potato, and it's like eight bucks. You know? uh, I don't know how that all started, but I mean, we just have these street, and we came with this idea, we'd have street dances, and we would, and we were, I think we were the first ones to do it. Uh, and uh, we'd set up either in front of West's department store or in front of Otasco and play and Larry Lindsay's band uh, we'd get we would have a little battle of the bands thing where they would play a set and then we'd play a set and then they'd play a set and then we'd play a set and then it even grew from there where we would get you know flatbed trucks and have you know concerts there at the shopping center parking lot and you know all these people would come it was a big deal so uh you're talking like a thousand people oh uh, sometimes yeah, yeah. I mean, fill that parking lot up. So this be in the summer mostly. Summer mostly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we played uh, uh, after parties and stuff after high school football games and stuff, and uh, at all these different schools, and you know, we knew everybody. It was we'd draw a crowd. Uh, we did some street dances where they would block off the entire. Jacksonville Shopping Center parking lot for us. Really? And we'd have a thousand kids there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, the police would just roll on the outside, take care of everything, make sure nobody had any trouble, and they don't do that anymore anywhere. Right, you know, exactly. but, but then they knew where all the kids were. Uh, we were setting up on a uh, flatbed truck, as I remember. You know, just kind of get up off the street, wasn't any stage really, so we just had a flatbed back there. So we got up on that and set up our equipment. And those were always a lot of fun. You know, they'd do it at night where it was a little cooler and uh, play for a couple hours. And another group would play, you know, 30, 40 minutes, and you'd play again. It was back and forth. They'd call it the Battle of the Bands, and there'd be people dancing out the parking lot and everything. 